What is up guys? Chase Oliver 68 here. TNA Bound for Glory 2011. Did it deliver? Did Kurt Angle lose the TNA World Championship? Did we see a new world champion? And who won Hogan vs. Sting? Well, you'll find out in this review. But first, description box. I'm your Y2J fan. Go sub to him. I think he's chill. But anyways, let's continue. So TNA Bound for Glory opened up with the pre-show. The pre-show kind of just hyped up the crowd, showed you what matches there were, and gave you a free bonus match in a tag match between Mexican America versus Ink Inc. To me, I thought this match was okay. You know, it wasn't too special. It wasn't too great. You know, there were some cool spots from Supermax and everyone in the ring, you know. But in the end of all, um, Mexican America wins and retains their tag team titles. And this was where I was like, huh? Because I thought... Hernandez's contract was up for TNA and I thought they were going to get rid of him and I think that's why they were doing this tag match but I guess they may be keeping Supermax. I like Supermax and to be honest he's a talent I wouldn't give up even if you're not very high on him. I think he's a talent that could be good for you in the future and especially if you guys are lacking in that Latino department TNA I would keep him. But Mexican America wins in the okay um, opening pre-show match I guess you can say. It. I'll just count it as opening match. I, I thought it was okay. Then we get on to the main card. The main card kicks off with Double A Austin Aries defending his exhibition title against the Brian Kendrick or Brian Kendrick, whatever his name is. Brian Kendrick was doing some weird shit before this match. Dancing, oh, that was so weird. But this was a good opener match, in my opinion. Like, you know, it was much better to me than their no surrender encounter. I thought the no surrender encounter was like, eh. But then afterwards, it was just like, bam. It was just start off slow, built their way up to the action points of the match. Very good opener. I liked it. Austin Aries won after the Brain Buster. Crowd was into it. Right decision won. Austin Aries is that X-Division champion that is the heel. And the Philadelphia crowd was into Austin Aries. You know, Philadelphia, they're always the one of the greatest fans in professional wrestling. What can I say? And Austin Aries wins. Everything seemed good from here. So let's go on to the next match. Next match. And this match beat my expectations. It actually is one of my matches of the night was RBD versus Jerry Lynn in a Full Metal Mayhem match. Now, the beginning of this match, you know, we're in Philadelphia. This is kind of like a tribute to ECW type of thing. Fans were chanting ECW throughout this whole match. You know, they were into it. And this match at first kind of started slow and choppy. You know, RBD and Jerry Lynn were doing the whole wrestling sequence move where they do moves and they know each other so well, so we're going to counter these moves and no one's going to get the clear-cut advantage and then we're going to stand up and look at you. That was good. And then afterwards when the weapons start bringing in and they start bringing in all the ladders and the chairs that were in this match, this match started to get higher and higher up where the crowd was so into it and the spots they were doing were very not original but unique and something that I did enjoy. This was a match that I could watch again. I did like this match. That was a good part on the card. It was at this good second match after a good exhibition match. Keep that crowd fired up because you need that crowd fired up for when you do go to those final matches. Thought it was well done. RBD won must much needed. And at the end they handshake their friends again. I have no problem with that to be honest. It's just kind of weird how Jerry Lynn all of a sudden was mad at RVD and now he's like oh I respect you buddy we, you just kicked my ass but we're still cool bro okay but other than that one of my matches of the night next up we got the triple threat match between Crimson Matt Morgan and Samoa Joe Joe was hot with the crowd Matt Morgan was eh, and Crimson was just hated and I guess people don't like Crimson there but you know this match was um, pretty decent it was too short for my tasting you know the ending was kind of weird you know I, I liked it though because they showed the athleticism of all these big men it was surprising what they can do in the ring you know Crimson going over the ropes hitting that big splash and then Shamoa Joe doing the suicide dive and Matt Morgan off the top rope diving on Crimson you know that was cool showing that these guys are big and athletic and they can do shit in the ring just like all these other smaller guys you know it was a nice little match but the ending was just kind of weird the ending came when Matt Morgan was going to go for the carbon footprint on Samoa Joe and the turnbuckle. He misses. And it doesn't even look like an impactful miss where Matt Morgan couldn't have done anything afterwards. No, Matt Morgan's just selling this and it looks so awkward. He's just sitting there and he's like, oh, my knee. And then Joe gets speared by Chris Crimson. Crimson wins. And I was just like, Morgan couldn't have broke that up. It made no sense. And then afterwards, Joe gets up and, he, and he's degaffing. Like he's no selling that fucking spear. And then Morgan just kind of looks at Crimson, kind of hinting Crimson Morgan, something I would like to see. But we will have to wait and see. So it was all right. Nothing too special here. Crimson won, which is needed because he is that undefeated superstar. You want to keep that streak going, TNA. We got some backstage segment with Karen Jarrett. Basically, she was mad that Tracy was talking to her kids. 
and then she announced she was a special guest referee for the knockout title match later tonight. Whoopee! Next up, we had the knockouts title match. Oh, no, not the knockout title match. Sorry, sorry, my mistake. I'll wear that one. One of my matches of the night. Bully Ray versus Mr. Anderson. Now, this match, from start to finish, was just what it needed to be. A good old-fashioned brawl between these two who kind of have some animosity at, at each other. And they delivered. Bully Ray and Mr. Anderson, they were just hitting at each other, going backstage. The fans were involved. You know, Anderson throwing the beer, grabbing the sign. A lady throwing beer at Mr. Anderson. You know, the fans were into it, screaming at Bully Ray. This was good. It had a great feel to it. I was just, like, into this match. You know, going backstage, the fans were pissed because they were like, hey, we want to fucking still chill with these guys. These guys are cool. They're, like, letting us do stuff with them. And, you know, a lot of cool spots, you know, in this match, using the false count anywhere. Guardrails being used in the ring. I can't remember the last time I've seen a guardrail, you know, just get pulled out of the area. Just is used during a match. That was pretty unique. You know, there was some cool stuff in this match, but the only thing that was a problem with this match, and it's not a big problem, but it just looked very bad at the ending. So Mr. Anderson, he was going to go for a senton bomb when Bully Ray was on the table on the outside of the ring. Mr. Anderson totally whips and misses. Bully Ray literally no sells that shit. Tells him, do the mic check. He literally tells him to do the mic check. They're like talking to each other. Bully Ray gets mic checked on through the table. Mr. Anderson wins. Smart decision. You got to build Mr. Anderson up as that next top face. Because he is the guy that you want to build in the future for a face role. Or maybe even a heel role. Whatever you suit best. Bully Ray did his job. He put over Mr. Anderson. And plus he already beat Mr. Anderson at Hardcore Justice. So Mr. Anderson has to get a win here. And maybe you guys will finish this match somewhere else. But... I think this was a good way to end the feud, and I think both men should move on and do something different. And this is where the low point of the show started to kick in. And before I talk about why it was a low point of the show, we had Jackson James. If you guys do not know who Jackson James is, he was this referee that apparently was with Immortal. Like, there was this referee in TNA that was helping Immortal win all these matches. And Jackson James was that guy. So... Pretty much TNA decided, hey, we're going to use this guy, Eric Bischoff's son, and put him as a different name for storyline purposes. And Eric Bischoff and lets out the bag that Jackson James is his son going by his real name, helping Immortal throughout the whole time in TNA. And then Mike today and freaking Taz were like freaking out like, oh my god, that's Eric Bischoff's son. I didn't even know that was Eric Bischoff's son. You today? No, I didn't, Taz, but that's was crazy. You know, they were just freaking out and oh my god. And... Then the knockouts match happened. Oh, God. I'm not going to sugarcoat this shit. This match wasn't that great. The only good action in this ring was when Mickey and Winter were in it. Karen Angle was terrible as a guest referee. I did not like that whatsoever. I didn't think she needed to be the guest referee, but for whatever reason, she needs to be in this match. It was just annoying. The ending came when Winter was going to use her bloody whatever the fuck that is, that drink she drinks. She spits it. She was going to spit it in Mickey's face, but it spits in Karen's face instead, so Karen can't see shit. And Karen basically was out of commission. Mickey hits the Mickey T on Winter. She thinks she's going to win the match. Then Madison right now nowhere pushes both of them out of the ring very sloppily. And then they start rolling around punching each other. Velvet Sky hits her pedigree-like move. Tracy runs down to the ring because Karen Angle said to Tracy, if there's anything that happens to me, you got to come in because you're also the vice president. Tracy goes one, two, three. Velvet Sky wins. You know, I can see why they were building this up for a long time. How Velvet Sky wanted to win a TNA title. Why not do it on your biggest show? Bound for Glory. You know, it, it makes sense. I'm just not a huge fan of Velvet Sky in ring as a woman. Yes, she's sexy as fuck, but overall, just as a wrestler, I'm just not a big fan of her. I prefer to belt on Winter or James, to be honest, just because they can actually wrestle. And I felt Winter and James could have been a more interesting feud if used rightly but uh, it is what it is so we might see winter velvet we might see james velvet who knows but hey maybe she will improve in the ring as champion then this next match and this match really really pissed me off being a tna fan since 2002 i was expecting more from this match now i know these guys didn't really start feuding until 2004 is when they started really getting at each other or early 2005 but this was a match that most tna original fans do like and aj styles versus christopher Daniels and to me, I was expecting much more for this. They do a video package showing all these gruesome battles that they had, all these hard-fought battles, all these crazy stuff they were doing. And this was supposed to hype you up for this match, you know. You're saying, God, this is a rivalry in TNA that's been going on forever. 
it's going to finally end here tonight. And it turned out that it didn't here tonight. And this is where I was like, oh my god, are you serious? I was not happy with what happened in that rain. You know, the mat, the in-ring action, okay, yeah, it was good. There's some cool spots. But the thing was, I was expecting much more from this match, as I could say. You can call me a Debbie Downer if you want. But, you know, to be honest, I just wasn't impressed with what was going on. I just, I did like what they did. Some of the stuff that they did in the ring, the opening sequence was good. And then the, in the middle, it kind of fell flat. Daniels on the mic was fine. But to me, I just felt there should have been much more. But, you know, that's, that wasn't the case. AJ Styles, the ending comes when there was a screwdriver introduced in the match earlier on. And then it was kind of just placed on this turnbuckle. AJ Styles goes super seen on Daniels after Daniels has been beating up, beating him up the whole match. AJ grabs the fucking screwdriver. He's going to use it on Daniels. Daniels just as like quitting leaves. And it makes you feel like this feud's going to continue. And I thought this match, being an I quit match, a match where you used to end feuds, was going to end this all. But it turns out it might continue it on. Oh, God. Next up, we get... Ah, oh fuck it. I'm just going to go with this as quick as possible because I really don't want to talk about this. Should have been saved for Impact. Jeff Jarrett comes out, calls out Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy says, I, to, I got one word for you, Jeff Jarrett. Kicks him, starts beating him up. D'Lo Brown comes out, gets the biggest pop, one of the biggest pops of the night. Fans are chanting D'Lo. Jeff Hardy kicks Jeff Jarrett's ass. Jeff Jarrett screaming at Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy screaming at Jeff Jarrett. D-Lo, D-Lo, D-Lo. Pretty much that whole fucking segment. There was no point to the segment on this fucking show. If you wanted to use Jeff Hardy, put him in the damn match. Do not freaking waste our time with this. This was not needed. And you wasted time to put potentially to either Steen and Hogan or most likely Rude and Angle. Next up, we get Steen versus Hogan. And in this match, you know, I'm not going to bash it. It was fine to me. I didn't hate anything about it. I knew these two weren't going to produce like the greatest match of all time. My expectations weren't so high for this. It had a good year's worth of build up. You know, they were building this up for a long time that they were going to probably do this. And, you know, it was fine. For, for their age and for what they did, I was happy with it. And then the ending came when Steen, you know, he like both guys got bloodied up. They, they took blade jobs. You know, they were hitting each other with this like fucking metal thing. And Hogan was bloodied and Steen was bloodied. And it was a no DQ match where Flair was out there. Woo! And then afterwards, um, Steen gets the Scorpion Death Draw, Scorpion Death Lock onto Hogan, and this leads to Jack Jefferson or Jack J Jackson James. I mean, sorry, I don't know where I said that name. Jackson James confused because he told his daddy Hogan's gonna win, and Hogan taps out. Jackson James has no choice but to ring the bell. Dixie Carter's all happy, and this leads to Immortal coming out and Immortal beating down Steen. Now this is where shit gets stupid. So Jackson James, you know, I can understand he was just, he didn't want this to happen. So he grabs a chair when Eric Bishop was going to swing at Steen and he stops it. And then they start beating up Jackson James. And then all of a sudden Hogan sees Steen getting beaten up and he, all of a sudden these two hated each other entering Bound for Glory. Why in the fuck would Hogan, after getting his ass kicked by this guy who beat him up bloody senseless, help him? Hogan helped Steen. The crowd was into it. I'll admit that the crowd did a good job. At cheering at this. The crowd did a good job getting me into this, but it made no sense why Hogan helped Steen. If someone wants to comment down below why it made sense, go be right ahead because I don't understand how Hogan all of a sudden just turned face like that. He made a total 180 and made himself into a face. I mean, seriously, I just don't understand. I mean, really? Oh, God, that, that part was just dumb and it took up all this time and we didn't even get a Hulk Hogan leg drop. What's up with that, brother? Then we get on to the main event of the evening. Kurt Angle versus Robert Roode. Now this match was very, sh not very short, but for a world title match in my opinion, not as long as, it, as I wanted it to be, but it was good in reaction. Was it one of my matches of the nights? Yes, I'd put that at probably number three, maybe even number two. Was I happy with the result? Oh. No, 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 no. The in reaction was great, but the result... And the fact that you guys were promoting this whole Velvet Sky winning a TNA knockout championship for first time on the big show, and you end a show like this, leaving a sour taste in many fans who probably bought this pay-per-view maybe to see Rude face Angle, because I'm not going to lie, guys, I did buy this pay-per-view. I did. I was excited for it. I've always bought every Bound for Glory. It's been kind of like my thing. I buy every WrestleMania, buy every Bound for Glory, maybe a couple WWE pay-per-views, maybe a, maybe a lockdown or two, but really... You're going to end your show like that? 
I wouldn't have cared if Rude tapped out to Angle. Although it wouldn't have made sense. I wouldn't have cared. But the way you end it, really. You promote Robert Rude. Being this guy for 13 years. Working at this spot for the business. And he finally gets it. You put on a good match with him and Angle. And it was brilliant up to maybe Robert Rude making Angle tap out. But instead you end it like this? <sighs> Namaste. Namaste. Kurt Angle hits the Angle Slam on Robert Rude. Robert Rude's hand was on the bottom rope. And Kurt Angle was holding the bottom rope. And then the referee himself looks confused. He goes, one, two, and he, he goes, three. Oh. What? I thought there was going to be more added. I was looking at the clock. I'm like, no, there, there has to be more added. And then all of a sudden, the referee's doing this. So I thought, like, I, I, I knew this was the injury sign, but in my mind, I was like, maybe he's restoring the match. Maybe he's restoring the match. Maybe Robert Rude will win. No. Angle walks out with the belt. And Robert Rude's sitting there like, are you kidding me? This was a perfect moment to build a new star, and you fuck it up like this? The match was good, yes. The crowd was behind Angle and Rude, yes. But the fact is this. Robert Rude needed to win the TNA World title to make this show very good and to show you care about new stars, but instead you fuck it up, you end in a controversial decision, and it left a bad taste in those Philadelphia fans' mouths, and I feel bad for the people that were there to watch this ending. This show potentially was good from the beginning and then fell down. These fans freaking cheered their souls out, freaking was one of the most liveliest crowds I've heard since Money in the Bank 2011. I was at SummerSlam, that crowd was alright, but anyways, this was just disappointing to see at the end. I wish it ended in a different fashion than a controversial way. I don't get why Robert Roode couldn't have win here, especially when WrestleMania was used to build new stars. Why can't Bound for Glory be like that? Why? I just don't understand. To me, this show had good potential. From the beginning, it was very good. They placed the matches in order, which is the way I like it. Then once the knockouts match happened, I was like, oh, that was just one bad match, you know. AJ and Daniels will tear down the roof. That didn't really tear down the roof. You know, the fans were kind of dead during when Daniels was talking. And I felt there was too much I quit stuff in there. Steen and Hogan, the, the crowd was going crazy. I forgot to mention that crowd was going crazy. I mean, they appreciated both those men. Like I said, the match itself was not that bad. But the fucking shit afterwards, oh God. And then this? I'm sorry. You know, I'm not going to base this. If I order, you know, I ordered a show. I paid my hard-earned money. You know, I'm not going to base it off that. I'm not going to be that biased. Yeah, you can get that from me. If I was going to base it off that and based off my reaction, I can't really just say I, was, I am pissed off at what happened to me. And if you guys cannot tell, I was, I'm a huge Bobby Roode fan. I, I love Kurt Angle, but I thought it was time for Bobby Roode to win the world title. But overall, the show, you know, match-wise, it was good. Some storyline stuff was kind of eh. But overall, I just wasn't impressed with this show. You know, it, the, like I said, some of the beginning of the part of the show was very impressive. And then... It fell flat. It just couldn't finish, and that's what pissed me off. You know, I wouldn't have mind if the knockouts match was just the only bad match on this card, and then every other match was good. You know, I thought AJ and Daniels was going to be better. You know, I was just expecting. You know, I went into the show enjoying it. I was into it, and then I was into AJ and Daniels in the beginning. And then it just kind of fell flat during the match. And same with Rude and Angle. I was into this whole match. I was screaming, I was excited, I thought Rue was going to win, and then this shit happens, I was just in shock. So, to be honest, I know I'm probably going to get hate for this. I'm going to give this a C-, minus. and if I was basing it off what I ordered, guys, the show would be a D. But since I'm just basing it on my opinion alone, I'm going to give it a C-. minus. I just felt that they missed a lot of big opportunities to show that you're changing for your company, and now a lot of people who were going to believe this company was going to change due to the fact of you know, what you guys were doing with Bobby Roode and how Hogan scene was going to be executed and it was going to be the final time. But after this, it was just C minus. And am I interested in watching TNA? I don't know. Am I going to stop watching TNA? No, but I was just expecting a lot more from this match. And I, I guess it just didn't meet my expectations. Thank you guys for watching this review. I know it's pretty long, but I was just so clustered with the ending part of this show and I had to rant on it. Comment down below what you guys thought about the show. 
subscribe above for more content from me like or dislike this video whatever follow me on twitter add me on skype remember subscribe to my guy that i plugged and subscribe to see a live video this is chase oliver 68 hope you guys enjoy your sunday